subclavian artery. This is the principal artery which continues as axillary artery for the upper limb. It also supplies a considerable part of the neck and brain through its branches. Origin On the right side, it is a branch of the brachiocephalic artery. It arises posterior to the sternoclavicular joint. On the left side, it is a branch of the arch of the aorta. It ascends and enters the neck posterior to the left sternoclavicular joint. Both arteries pursue a similar course in the neck. Course Each artery arches laterally from the sternoclavicular joint to the outer border of the first rib, where it ends by becoming continuous with the axillary artery. The scalenous anterior muscle crosses the artery anteriorly and divides it into three parts. The first part is medial, the second part is posterior, and the third part is lateral to the scalenous anterior. Relations of the first part Anteriorly The immediate relations from medial to lateral side are common carotid artery, vagus, internal jugular vein, the sternothyroid and sternohyoid muscles, sternocleidomastoid, posterior relations, suprapleural membrane, cervical pleura, and the apex of the lung. Relations of the second part, anteriorly, scalenous anterior, right phrenic nerve deep to the prevertebral fascia, sternocleidomastoid. Posteriorly, suprapleural membrane, cervical pleura, and the apex of the lung. Superiorly, upper and middle trunks of the brachial plexus. Relations of the third part. Anteriorly, middle one-third of the clavicle, the posterior border of sternocleidomastoid. Posteriorly, scalenus medius, lower trunk of brachial plexus, suprapleural membrane, cervical pleura, and the apex of the lung. Superiorly, the upper and middle trunks of the brachial plexus. Inferiorly, first rib. Branches. From the first part. Vertebral artery. Internal thoracic artery. Thyrocervical trunk, which divides into three branches, which are inferior thyroid, suprascapular, transverse cervical arteries. Costocervical trunk comes from the second part. Costocervical trunk, which divides into two branches superior intercoastal and deep cervical arteries. From the third part, dorsal scapular artery occasionally. Vertebral artery. Vertebral artery is the first and largest branch of the first part of the subclavian artery. It runs a long course and ends in the cranial cavity by supplying the brain. It is divided into four parts. Internal thoracic artery. Internal thoracic artery originates from the inferior aspect of the first part of the subclavian artery opposite the origin of the thyrocervical trunk. The origin lies near the medial border of the scalenous anterior. The artery runs downwards and medially in front of the cervical pleura. Anteriorly, the artery enters the thorax by passing behind the first coastal cartilage. It runs till sixth intercoastal space where it ends by dividing into superior epigastric and musculophrenic arteries. Thyrocervical trunk Thyrocervical trunk is a short, wide vessel which arises from the front of the first part of the subclavian artery, close to the medial border of the scalenous anterior and between the phrenic and vagus nerves. It almost immediately divides into the inferior thyroid, suprascapular, and transverse cervical arteries. The inferior thyroid artery is a branch of the thyrocervical trunk which arises from the subclavian artery. It runs first upwards, then medially, and finally downwards to reach the base of the gland. During its course, it passes behind the carotid sheath and the middle cervical sympathetic ganglion and in front of the vertebral vessels, and gives off branches to adjacent structures. Its terminal part is intimately related to the recurrent laryngeal nerve, while proximal part is away from the nerve. The artery divides into four to five glandular branches which pierce the fascia separately to reach the lower part of the gland.
one ascending branch anastomoses with the posterior branch of the superior thyroid artery and supplies the parathyroid glands. In addition to glandular branches to the thyroid, it gives the ascending cervical artery which runs upwards in front of the transverse process of cervical vertebrae. The inferior laryngeal artery which accompanies the recurrent laryngeal nerve and enters the larynx deep to the lower border of the inferior constrictor. The suprascapular artery, it lies behind the internal jugular vein and the sternocleidomastoid, runs laterally and downwards and crosses the scalenous anterior and the phrenic nerve. It then crosses the trunk of the brachial plexus and runs in the posterior triangle behind and parallel with the clavicle to reach the superior border of the scapula. It crosses above the suprascapular ligament and takes part in the anastomosis around the scapula. In addition to branches to surrounding muscles, the artery also supplies the clavicle, scapula, shoulder, and acromioclavicular joints. The transverse cervical artery runs laterally above the suprascapular artery. It crosses the scalenous anterior and the phrenic nerve, passing behind the internal jugular vein and the sternocleidomastoid. It then crosses the brachial plexus and the floor of the posterior triangle to reach the anterior border of trapezius, where it divides into superficial and deep branches. The superficial branch accompanies the spinal root of accessory nerve till the lower end of the muscle. The deep branch passes deep to levator scapulae and takes part in anastomosis around the scapula. Sometimes the two branches, the superficial from thyrocervical trunk and the deep from the third part of the subclavian artery. Then these are named as superficial cervical and dorsal scapular arteries. Costocervical trunk. Costocervical trunk arises from the posterior surface of the second part of the subclavian artery on the right side, but from the first part of the artery on the left side. It arches backwards over the cervical pleura and divides into the descending superior intercostal and ascending deep cervical arteries at the neck of the first rib. The superior intercostal artery descends in front of the neck of the first rib and divides into first and second posterior intercostal arteries. The deep cervical artery is analogous to the posterior branch of a posterior intercostal artery. It passes backwards between the transverse process of the seventh cervical vertebra and the neck of the first rib. It then ascends between the semispinalis capitis and cervices up to the axis vertebra. It anastomoses with the occipital and vertebral arteries. Clinical anatomy. Third part of the subclavian artery can be effectively compressed against the first rib after depressing the shoulder. The pressure is applied downwards, backwards, and medially in the angle between the sternocleidomastoid and the clavicle. The right subclavian artery may arise from the descending thoracic aorta. In that case, it passes posterior to the esophagus, which may be compressed and the condition is known as dysphagia lusoria. Subclavian steel syndrome. Subclavian steel syndrome is obstruction to the subclavian artery proximal to the origin of vertebral artery may lead to stealing of blood from the brain through the opposite vertebral artery. This may provide necessary blood to the affected side. The nervous symptoms acquired are called subclavian steel syndrome.